Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is take a quick look at the toolbox. The toolbox is located over on the left-hand side of the viewport when you first start Maya. It's divided into two key areas. The top area provides us with tools that allow us to interact with objects along the lines of selecting and manipulating the object. Sure. The bottom portion is a series of buttons that provide convenient quick ways of changing our panel layout. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and start with the top section. Right now you can see what we've got highlighted is basically the select tool. And this just allows us to simply select something. Deselect, select. And I can't accidentally move it, scale it, or anything like that. Okay. That's it. The next thing we have is our lasso tool. And the lasso tool allows us to draw some sort of neat little lasso <laughs> marquee selection right. for selecting objects. So simple enough. The next we get into uh, next thing is going to be three different buttons that allow us to transform the object, starting with the move tool. So we select the move tool and we can move the object around. Rotate tool, I guess you figured it out by now. <laughs> We're rotating. Rotated. Rock on. Scale, scale. Simple enough. And you notice I'm using the manipulators visible with each of these different tools to control the specific action I'm looking for. Right. We move on down here, we get the soft modification tool, which allows us to softly modify geometry, which is really kind cool. Kind of like pushing or pulling like clay. Yeah, with a fall off type yeah. effect. And that's something we'll get into a little bit later on. All right, and then finally down here we get into a show manipulator tool. Now we've been seeing manipulators as I go through these various tools right here. Let's go ahead and zero this guy back up. And we know, as discussed earlier in the channel box section, that with uh, manipulators set to standard, as we click on these different attributes, mm -hmm. we get the appropriate manipulator. Right. But watch this. I'm going to jump down here to my input node, and I'm going to click on InSweep. I did not get a manipulator down here, but mm -hmm. there is a manipulator that will allow me to affect the InSweep of the object. And this is where the Show Manipulator tool comes in. Gotcha. So with Show Manipulator tool, I can hit T or simply click this button. And I'll discuss the hotkeys for these other guys in just a second. But here's what it looks like. Click. Ooh, Ooh, lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. So now I can come in here and, like I talked about a second ago, control the in sweep. So if I grab this guy right here and start manipulating it, I'm opening my sphere up. Nice. Quite simple. If I want to change the axes of the sphere without going in and changing its rotation, I can come up here and grab this manipulator and, let's say, grid snap it. And boom, we're now lying down along the Z axes, yet I have not rotated the item. Very cool. So show manipulators very handy. And different objects have different manipulators. Like with lights, you get all sorts of manipulators for controlling oh, yeah. the light itself. And finally, we have this little blank spot down here. Hmm. What is this for? Well, this is where we're going to get a button that's going to represent the last tool that we used. For example, let's see. Pick on a tool. I got it. Joint tool. Click the joint tool. The moment I activate the tool, look what happened down here. The tool is currently active, so we've got a border around it. At the same time, we can simply create an object or create a series of joints. Sure. Hit enter. And look at this. Now, right now, we've, we've jumped back to our show manipulator tool, which was the last thing that we were using. So I can come over here, let's say move, and we move it around or whatever. Now, I need to use the skeleton tool again. I can quickly come over here to my toolbox, click, and continue working with that particular tool. Cool. So it's very handy. Yeah, very easy. If I come up here to create, let's come down here to CV curve tool. Look at that. So now it's changed to a CV curve tool as the last tool that was used. Nice. So just a very, way to, very quick way to jump back to the last tool that was used. Hot keys, real quick, uh, for the select, we've got Q. And these keys all lie next to each other, which is really nice. For move, it's W. For rotate, it's going to be E. For scale, it's going to be R. And then for our uh, show manipulator, it's going to be T. And it's that simple. And then if you want to repeat the last tool, that's going to be Y. That's correct. So um, there you go, now that I've made some items over here. So that's our <laughs> toolbox. Right. Jumping down into the next area, this next area, to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on, because you'll notice that I'm having kind of an icon conflict down there. Oh, he just hit again. Watch this. Let's go ahead and click on these little icons over here that will allow us to hide that particular UI element. So let's go and hide that one, hide that one, and hide that one. See, more stuff starting to show up, and that's good enough. Now we can see everything. So the bottom half of the toolbox provides us with ways to access customized panel layouts that mm -hmm. have already been predefined, or you can save your own and call those up as well. So by default, I can come in here and say, show me just one giant view with a perspective view. <laughs> there we go. Or show me four panels that are divided up into a perspective view, top, front, and side. Bink, and there we are. Or maybe I like to work with a perspective view with an outliner on the left-hand side. Bink, there we are. 
or I'm doing some animation <laughs> and I need to work with my animation curves while seeing the object in a perspective view. Click, there it is. Or perhaps I'm working on some materials and I need to continue seeing the object in a perspective view for whatever reason. Click, and here it is. There we go. Hyper shade, which we'll be talking about more in a few minutes, and our perspective view. And then, of course, down here, maybe I'm working with some type of a rendering slash, or excuse me, animation setup where I need access to my hypergraph. So I can click on this, which can give me a perspective view, my hypergraph, and my graph editor down here all at the same time. Very cool. Here's the key thing. Yeah. Notice as I have been selecting between all of these different presets that this little boxed area right here, the buttons have been changing to indicate the number of panels that are currently active. Oh, I see. Watch this. So we've got three buttons right now with the top split. If I come all the way up here to the top and click, dink, look at this. Just one, one big fat button. One big fat button. So here's four, four little buttons. And what's really nice here is that with this, with these buttons, I can come in here and say, all right, you know what? Let's take the bottom right-hand side. So click that button. And I get access to all of the panels that I can show or all of the different utilities slash editors that I can show in that particular panel, starting off at the top, my camera views. So maybe I want the outliner down there. Ah, that's pretty nice. And maybe on the left-hand side, I want, I don't know, their little web browser. That would work. So I'm totally digging this. Now, at this time, perhaps maybe I want to go ahead and save what I got. So I can right-click anywhere down here and select Save the Current Layout. And then from Save Current Layout, I simply give it a name. Let's call this Buzz Layout and click OK. So we now have the Buzz Layout. And we can gain access to it quickly by coming up to any of these buttons that I want to represent the Buzz Layout. Mm -hmm. I can simply right-click on it. And there's Buzz Layout. So I'm going to actually change this button now to where it's no longer showing me a perspective hypergraph and a graph editor. I want it to always show me Buzz Layout. Think. Now, I have yet to define the graphic that's going to be used. Right. I can do that as well, believe it or not. So I can come in here, right-click, and I can edit the layouts, and I can change its image as well. So I can completely control what's being shown down here. But here's the convenient thing. Jump back over here. I'm working. Yeah, I'm doing my thing. Maybe do some quick changes to the curves. I'm still doing my thing. Now, yeah, we're back over here. Oh, I need to get access to the outliner and the uh, little web browser real quick. So we'll click down here. And you're all set up. And we're all set up. Very, Very cool. Very easy to work with it. And finally, we have this icon down here, which if you click on it, it's going to open up your Windows default browser, and it's going to take you to the alias Maya product page. Yeah. So that's pretty much it, just a real brief look at how the toolbox works and the different things that are available to you. And with that, that's going to wrap up this lesson. Thanks a lot.